Hi everyone. The Drake Cutter is the new straight to flyable starter ship that's made its debut appearance here in the 2952 International Aerospace Expo. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to do a quick review of it and go over its various ins and outs. I think that by now it's become apparent that every manufacturer is going to eventually have their own version of a starter ship. And so far, MISC, Origin, Consolidated Outland, and RSI all have ships that are officially recognized as starter vessels. It was only a matter of time before Drake ended up expanding out into this field as well. But the main question that kept coming up about the cutter was why? Why another starter ship? And what does it have that the others don't? I think that a better way to look at it is starter ships subscribe to the same philosophy that all the other ships that fall under the same category also adhere to. And it's that any one of them isn't supposed to be hands down better than the others. Instead, they're all meant to be equally capable of doing what they're designed to do. It's just that one of them is going to be more appealing to you because of the way that they go about doing it. And because of this, the cutter is going to have its own unique set of advantages and disadvantages when compared to the other starter ships. According to the Q&A, the cutter is going to have a larger quantum and hydrogen tank than the others do. And in a surprisingly non-Drake-like move, it's going to be a bit more tankier than the others. And this is going to be thanks to its armor and the fact that it has a stronger base structure. But in contrast to that, it's going to have lower than average strength shields. When it comes to maneuverability, the cutter's been built to act like a mini-interceptor, which means that its forward thrust and acceleration is above par for the kind of ship that it is. But its maneuverability is going to be lacking in comparison. Its engines pivot down so they can double its VTOL thrusters, which is going to help in a number of situations, like to stabilize the ship when it's flying at lower speeds or when it's trying to travel through heavy weather. It's also going to be able to hover for longer periods of time without overheating the engines. And it's going to have a powerful vertical takeoff, which could come in handy if you're on a planet that has a strong gravity field. Its interior has also been described as being the largest out of any of the other starter ships. The cutter's main and only entrance is through the back ramp, and the first thing that you'll come across is the cargo hold and a series of cabinets where most of the components are housed. And freight is stored along the port side wall in a stack two boxes per row and one on top of another. And this arrangement can hold a couple of two SCU boxes rather comfortably. And the cutter doesn't officially support carrying any other vehicles, but so far the mule, the STV, the PTV, and the rangers have been confirmed to be able to fit inside of it. And just to be perfectly clear, the mule barely fits into it. But you can close the back ramp and still be able to get out of the mule and into the cutter. When you're loading the mule up, I'd recommend that you take it slow because it has a tendency to start climbing up the walls, and the fit is so close that you can easily get it perma-stuck if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. The next section of the ship is the hab where you'll find the bed, and get this, a bathroom. It also has a small storage locker and some external shelving for holding your knickknacks. And past the hab is the flight deck where you'll find the last two components mounted onto the wall, a weapons rack, and the pilot seat. And the canopy also has a couple of armored blinders that slide into place for additional protection. Now, there are a few downsides to this ship. Like, for instance, it may look small from the outside, but it's deceptively chunky. And as a result, it's going to have a large profile, and once again, that's relatively speaking for the kind of ship that it is. And it's not rated to be a combat-focused vessel. In fact, they describe it as being quite low in the combat rankings. But it should be able to hold its own against any of the other starter ships. For weapons, it has two size 2 weapon hardpoints and two missile racks. And by default, it comes with two gimbaled size 1 guns and four size 1 missiles. So it's not particularly well armed, but it's not completely toothless either. I think that this ship would be most appealing to people who are fans of Drake's particular style and want to stick with that brand all the way from start to finish. And it handles and looks like a Drake ship is supposed to, but it's also oddly not very Drake-like in the way that it prioritizes amenities over its offensive abilities. Also, despite its bare-bones look, the cutter actually benefits from a lot of the current shipbuilding techniques that didn't exist when most of the other starter ships were made. It's more durable than the other starter ships, it has a bigger quantum and hydrogen fuel tank, it can carry a small vehicle internally, and has nearly every amenity that you're going to need. All these things qualify the cutter to be looked at as an advanced starter ship that's priced right for everything that you're getting out of it. Well, that's going to be it for this quick look at the Drake Cutter. I've been your host, Law of the West. Thanks for watching, and take care.